Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin to the video. AMD have unveiled the Polaris GPU architecture, and if their claims are accurate, it's going to be pretty damn epic. So, we've heard rumours, of course, of this GPU for some time now. It's been known as the Arctic Islands, we've heard it as Greenland, we've heard it as the Radeon 400 series, and while all of those things are probably still accurate, the actual architecture as a whole is revealed to be Polaris. There was also some questions regarding the GPU's overall architecture from a very, I guess you could say, aerial view. Is it still going to be GCN based? Is it going to be something entirely different? The answer is it will still be GCN, and whether it is the fourth generation of GCN architecture, and there are some major, substantial improvements which aren't just, oh, it's had a small die size shift or something like that. We're going to go into some of those in just a moment, but from a a very basic perspective the GPU will support HDMI 2.0a, DisplayPort 1.3 and 4K H6, H265 encode slash decode. This may or may not be interesting to you. The encode and decode if you do a lot of media, that type of thing, then it could certainly be quite nice. Optimization, optimized implementation, excuse me, of FinFA and they marketed, of course, as a historic leap forward in PPW, performance per watt, per watt over uh, Radeon, previous Radeon GPUs. And finally, planned availability, and this is probably the one that most of you are really salivating over, is going to be mid this year. So, what can we look forward to in terms of raw performance? Quite a bit, actually. Now, how... AMD demonstrated their card is by putting it up against a GTX 950. This is not necessarily performance orientated, so they're not trying to murder the GTX 950's frame rate. Essentially, they were running VSync at 60 FPS. Instead, they ran the same sim similar systems, um, which of course would be an i7, standard amount of memory, standard system configuration, running only at 1080p, but the performance per watt was the key. Now, the Polaris architecture, we don't know the model of the card or anything like that. It's obviously going to be one of the lower end cards, was only running at drawing 686 watts of power. 86. Now, the same system, apart from the graphics card, with a GTX 950, was pulling 140. That's a substantial substantial drop in power right there now obviously there are multiple reasons AMD is showing this off one it's to show that the card is really working that's pretty important now obviously at the end of the day these are not final iterations of the GPU so we could see further improvements when you know you and I get the hands on our on the cards but what AMD are doing here is showing that yes it's real. Not only that, but they're showing that just a very tiny, just a tiny test shows that this GPU has substantial power savings over 28nm. Moreover, of course, they're trying to kind of kick NVIDIA in the nuts as well. Let's just be totally honest. So what about the GPU? Now, once again, we don't know all the details about the architecture for obvious reasons. Well, first things first, let's discuss the actual naming conventions in there and AMD's newfangled ideology. So, RTG, Radeon Technology Group, have decided to make things a lot simpler. Now, product naming has always been a really, 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 really big problem with GPUs. For one, we've had a lot of rebranding. For two, in the case of the uh, Radeon 200 series for sake of argument there are so many different iterations there's things such as Tonga we've seen Hawaii all of these different iterations of the GCN architecture so Polaris is going to be kind of like the catch-all the umbrella architecture name uh, RTG by the way are referring to this as the macro architecture and so they want to essentially <laughs> still have code names there will still be the you know the normal hawaii's and so on but what they want to do is it's going to have different cores different engines and theoretically it's going to make it a lot easier for us to be able to understand what the hell we're buying 
essentially the GPU is almost like in blocks. You could almost think of this as an APU in the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One. You know how you've got the processor, the CPU, you've got the GPU, you've got the ESRAM, you've got the move engines, you've got the thing that makes you breakfast in the morning, you've got all these little things that do different jobs. What AMD are planning is just to be able to allow developers, well not developers, but their board partners or themselves to be able to enable or disable these things accordingly. So for the sake of argument, if they want to disable the encoding stuff, they can do that. And this of course will allow them much greater flexibility in positioning different parts of the GPU to different audiences. It's an interesting take, and if they do it smartly, and if it comes um, well marked, in other words, what a, a user gets, what they you know, think they're buying on the box, then I have absolutely no issues with it. Unfortunately, AMD are not being super forthcoming at the moment what we get inside the GPU. So in other words, we don't know, for example, how many stream processors it's going to feature, or how many ROPs, that type of deal. But we do have a broad overview of the actual GPU. So it's fair to say that AMD are being a little more coy than what they normally are. Indeed, AMD have actually been rather forthcoming in the past. Perhaps a little too much, particularly before reveals. And I think in a way it's kind of good they're being a little more cagey because it's maybe better from the perspective of surprising a consumers and b not letting their competition know everything that's going on under the sun eagle-eyed viewers will notice one of the big 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 changes are things such as hardware scheduler instruction prefetch improved shader efficiency memory compression and primitive discard accelerator that's a whole bunch of words to say this gpu be more efficient this gpu uses shaders better Simply put, as many of you are aware, there are thousands of shaders on a modern GPU. For the sake of argument, the PlayStation 4 has 1152. If you're talking about something like the Fury, it can have 4000 plus. And if you're talking about dual GPUs, then you're looking at 8000 plus. That is a lot. And as you can imagine, things get really complicated when you're trying to tell all of those GPUs do this. Well, stream processors do this. They're essentially just, I guess you could say, or very simple-minded processors. Keeping them fed is key. So, for the sake of argument, if 30% of them are generally idle, and I'm not saying that's an accurate number, I'm just throwing out there, then you're basically pissing performance to the wind. You're effectively losing um, performance. You're just not doing anything with it. And this is been an issue. Now, it's not just AMD that have had this problem. It, NVIDIA have it as well, but with the improvements, of course, to, let's say, for the sake of argument, APIs, we've had Max, we've, I'm sorry, Maxwell, we've had Mantle, we've got DirectX 12, and all of these other GPUs, it should be a lot better um, to be able to keep the beast fed. What should happen, however, now is that you've got much better scheduling across the GPU. So in other words, the GPU is much going to much more able to understand what each of its shaders are doing, how it can better fill those shaders, and how to officially use them. In case you're wondering what the hell a primitive discard accelerator does, it's a simple way of just saying it's better at getting rid of unseen geometry. Now, we have seen these, in the, these type of things, technologies in the past. Obviously, just like uh, memory compression, it's basically that, but on steroids. Essentially, the feeling is this. If you draw a scene, and I'm going to make this really simple because obviously we're running out of time here. If you draw a scene, let's say for the sake of argument, you draw a city scene, right? And you have a building that's being obscured by a truck, say half of the building is being obscured by the truck, then you don't need to draw what's behind that building. So generally this will be done, a very simplified version of the drawing will be done in the GPU first and then it will basically figure out what it needs to, I guess you could say, colour in. Now, 
that's much more efficient than let's say wasting all of that time shading once again behind that truck when behind that truck from the perspective of the player is not going to be able to be seen because once again there's a bloody truck right there uh you know blocking your visibility from what we're hearing most of the improvements in terms of performance i guess you could say the the bulk of it is going to be in improvements to the architecture as uh, sorry to the actual reduction in size of the die rather than the architecture that's not to say that the architecture won't have a big deal but the fact that they're shrinking it and moving it to a finfet process a smaller finfet process is going to be one of the big big changes now for the sake of brevity in this in this video and i know many of you are like what the hell brevity you brevity I am aware that normally my videos are pretty lengthy. Unfortunately, I'm on a bit of a time limit today, so I don't really have the the um, well the time to go into the FinFET processes and how they work. So I suggest either you do a bit of googling around. There's pretty good articles on you know the normal places like Wikipedia, or you could just wait and I'll cover it in an in-depth analysis in a not too distant future. Unfortunately, it's just how it is. So. I guess the last elephant in the room is high bandwidth memory. So, as you can imagine, HBM is not cheap to produce, right? What we haven't been told is when do HBM products fade out and traditional GDDR5 products fade in. So for the sake of argument, let's say that we're using the 300 series for point of comparison. If you were using the 300 series, would the 390X feature HBM and would the 390 feature HBM and then the 380X feature GDDR5 or would it be the 390 features GDDR5 and the 390X features HBM? You see where I'm going with this? Now, GDDR5 does still have a place in the market, and we know that they they are moving to GDDR5X or GDDR5.6, or not that is an AMD. That's, I guess you could say, a theory that they will certainly have those products available, but they are being produced. Essentially, there's no point in having high bandwidth memory if the bandwidth isn't required. So if price versus performance, there's no sense moving to HBM, you might as well keep GDDR5. For the sake of argument, if you're building a GTX 950, there's no point having HBM2 in it with the needless complexity just for a very small increase in speed. Because yes, it's more energy efficient, technically, but you're going to lose that by price and performance ratio anyway because it's so much more costly so it's not really worth it so all we can do is just wait um i guess it's gonna be kind of weird it should be pretty cool though in my opinion i'm really looking forward to this i mean amd are planning and designing this for console caliber performance in thin light notebooks that's what they're saying that's what they that's what their that's what their aim is they believe that we're gonna have like the playstation 4 i assume level of hardware performance in stuff that you can basically just fit in your briefcase and have very light power concerns which would be really awesome if it's accurate now at the end of the day the gpu is not launched now and it's not going to be launched for several months so all we can do is assume that these claims are accurate and these claims of course we have nothing to compare them to from team green we've heard rumors about what nvidia are doing but at the end of the day until there's a formal announcement it's really hard to compare apples and oranges between the two companies but and this is something i've mentioned several times over at the end of the day this is good for us as customers if amd able to basically offer what they're promising here it should be an absolute kick-ass gpu series let's just hope shall we anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now